Americanos. Lo mejor. Le han visto. A lo mejor. Ahorita les preguntamos. ¡Vámonos! Doing a makeup. Uh, working, senor. These bulls are yours? No, they're prized stock from Catapuelca. We're being paid to deliver them. Where? Uh, just south of the border to San Canyon. We'll meet up with the main herd there. Then we'll drive them north all the way to Kansas. You have the papers, of course. Yeah, yeah. There's Bill Aseo here. Who are you looking for, anyways? A man. Who is called El Hombre Bravo. It's important we find him before the Federales, too. Perhaps you have seen him. That one, he cannot speak. I guess you're all making him just a little bit nervous. Oh. Asustenos para que hable. Uh, let him be. I ain't seen nobody, right, Mr. Favor? Look, he's telling the truth. The only thing we've seen in the last two days are coyotes. We wouldn't recognize this man you're looking for even if we saw him anyways. Oh, you would know El Hombre Bravo if you saw him, senor. He is a huge man, taller than yourself. He has the courage of a lion and the shrewdness of a fox. Both show. Adios. Vámonos. What do you think they're looking for that El Hombre Bravo fella for? I wouldn't know. We're just lucky it wasn't us they were after. Set up the truck wagon? I figured on finding a place to bed them down first. Well, what's the matter with right here? All green and growy and water down there? We can make three, four more miles a day. Oh, you're getting just like Mr. Favor. What's the matter with you, boy? Did you let authority go to your head? No, it isn't that. It's just if we don't reach Sand Canyon the same time Mr. Favor does, I'll never hear the end of it. Hey, look. I don't recognize the riders, but I do the steer. Check that brand real closely. I think you'll find that steer belongs to us. I said he belongs to us. Now turn him loose. Rowdy, look up there. I am General Valesquez. 
These men, although they may not appear so, are federal soldiers. Uh, well, let's steer. Uh, it happens to be an American now. Perhaps we could pay you for him. Doesn't sound too bad. Going price, even out here on the trail, $20 a head. Wait a minute. This is only one peso. Dragon at animal. Now hold on just a minute. Senor! You are in Mexico during a time of internal strife, when an army must be fashioned from these men of local villages. Necessity sometimes requires us to confiscate food and supplies when we can. That is the nature of government. Yeah. Rodriguez. One more thing, senores. It will be necessary for us to search your wagons. For what? For a man, senor, known as El Hombre Bravo. When we find him, we intend to make him regret not being dead. Well, suit yourself. Uh, we haven't got anybody with us that didn't start out with us, anyway. We shall see, senor. If there is, you will be as regretful as he is. Oh, walking to the border, huh? That's uh, 40 miles from here, you know. See. Si. See. Si. I'll tell you what, you, uh, you stick around for a little bit so I can decide what to do with you. It sure is a silly looking chicken you got there. He's not a chicken. He's a gamecock. El número uno. The champion. Excuse me. Just a favor. Another one. She's my sister, dear. Hi. It's singing. Where you two come from? Over there. Well, let's go see, huh? Pero, pajarito, estábamos con C. Vámonos. If you want a good to drink. Oh, well, it's not the cleanest, but it won't hurt any. Why is that anyway? The 
children call me Pajarito. It means little bird. <laughs> By profession, I am a school teacher. They call me Pajarito because I sing for them. It comforts them when they are disturbed. These days, we sing often. Mm. Oh, my name is Favor, Gil Favor. This here is Mushy, Mushy Mushgrove. How do you do? Uh, the boy tells me that uh, you're headed for the border. Uh, just a little above. In your country, there is a mission where they will be cared for. You expect to walk all that way with the children? It's rough going from here to there. I am not disturbed with what is ahead, senor, but with what we are running from. What would that be? The revolutionaries were camped in our village when they were attacked by the federales. Our village was burned to the ground. I hid as many children as I could find. Now I'm taking them to liberty. Expect the federales to arm a bunch of children? Oh, yes. I have seen children shot dead in the streets. Well, I heard said at Puerto Border. When we meet them, you could go with us. Oh, senor. We would be no trouble. Look, I've got more than enough to worry about already without adding them. Hmm. I could help take care of them. The children will each light a candle for you tonight, senor. Yeah. Children, they need to rest. Oh, we'd better make those hills up ahead first. They need to rest now. Looks like they're holding up pretty good. Oh, they would never let you see how they really feel. Look, you see those twin buttes up ahead side by side? Yes. Okay. We're in what you might call like a funnel. This wind keeps coming up. It'll blow us right back to where we started out this morning. Senor, are you concerned for the bulls or for the children? I'm more than concerned about both. El número uno! El número uno! Pepe! You wait here, I'll go get him. <laughs>
hang on to that bird for all you're worth, understand? You got better things to do than chasing a bird. Thank you, Senor Favor. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Two dozen men there. Who knows how many more they got in these hills. Sorry to have troubled you, senores. Gracias. Vistos! Those are soldiers of the sorriest lot I ever saw. Yeah, well, in our present position, how they look doesn't really matter. Fork leave the Sand Canyon. I'm gonna go ahead and check them out. I want you to keep an eye on things, right? Sure, Mr. Favor. My mother, she can so much better. When's the last time you saw your mom? Many days. Well, yesterday, me and Mr. Favor, we saw a bunch of writers. And they asked us if we seen a man called, uh, El Hombre Bravo. You ever see him? Oh, si, sí, but they will never catch him. Not El Hombre Bravo. Why not? Senor Moshi, if you could see him, he is a giant. His clothes are white, and he is very brave. He has a long mustache to here, and he wears two silver guns. Do you know how to use them? Sure. One, two, three. You keep an eye on things. I say, hi, minute. Uh, that creature is breeding stock. He's worth more than four hundred dollars. Now you get him all upset, and he's just liable to run away. And just how long do you think it'd take you to pay for him out of your thirty dollars a month? Huh? Look out! You 
all right? You lost your Serape. I will save us a lot of troubles here. I have never denied it. I am the one called El Hombre Bravo. Right now I've got a bull to chase down. You can save us both a lot of trouble by not being here when I get back. I know this seems very strange to you. I would like to explain something. I am a simple village schoolmaster. Just an ordinary man who teaches children how to read and write and figure. In my village, there was an old printing press. There are very few books in a little village. How can one teach children to read without books? So I learned how to use the printing press. And then when my friends, the revolutionaries, wanted pamphlets, what was more natural than for them to come to me? And what was more natural than for me to write the pamphlets for them? But men like children need heroes. So I signed all of the pamphlets, El Hombre Bravo. It was a phrase, a symbol. I, I don't even remember when I thought of it. A hero's name, El Hombre Bravo. Three words at the end of a pamphlet. How could I guess it would become a legend? It meaning you. Senor Favor, look at me. I, I do not pretend to be anything other than what I am. I swear I did not mean that I was El Hombre Bravo. No, <laughs> it just happened. Senor, I do not even ride a horse well. The gun that I carry, I have scarcely used it. Only a very few know me to be El Hombre Bravo. Well, people are gonna think when they find out that El Hombre Bravo is un pajarito, a little school teacher. They must never find that out. I am not important. El Hombre Bravo is. The idea of El Hombre Bravo must not be destroyed. And neither must the children. Ran into a bunch of federales about an hour ago. Seems like they're looking for you. What was their leader like? He's riding a big black stallion and on some kind of an overcoat. General Valeskis. You know him? Only by reputation. He has sworn that he will bring in El Hombre Bravo to be disgraced before the people. And what happens to the children when they find them with you? Senor Favor, I promise you, if my presence is discovered, I will surrender myself to him. I will not endanger the children. She is good with children. I think you are much the same, only you do not like to show it. The thing I don't like is these kids being out in this kind of country, caught up in your fighting. And they should be home somewhere safe in bed. Yes, they should. But they insisted that if I must go, they will go with me. Stop trading on those kids. Sing your favor. They do have an illusion that must not be destroyed. Oh, I'm not going to tell them if that's what you're afraid of. Thank you. All right. The kids will go along with us. All the way to the border and through to the mission. And you can go along, but only on one condition. If those wolves come howling after you, I'm going to throw you to them. Out you go, understood? You have my word, senor.
We're almost done. How can you tell? Just by feeling it. Oh, when the ground, it gets real hot right above the bean pot. Well, it's all of a sudden like. And then when it's good and warm, well, that means they're ready. Good. I will help you dig them up. It's warm. That's the way the soldiers cook their food when they cross the desert with bodies. Really? Yes, they could build their fires in the daylight. Then put their food in the pots and put their pots in the ground with the hot coals all around and cover it with dirt so the soldiers of Maximilian could not find any fires at night. That was clever of him. The idea came from Benito Juarez because he was a good man who would do things for his people, like a Benito Lincoln. They're just alike, all right. Did Benito Lincoln soldiers ever do this? Sure, many times. That's how I heard about it. When did they do it? Tell me. Well, when they were crossing the Delaware, or this big river. I mean, he figured his men would get hungry, so he got this idea to cook the food like this, so the Redcoats couldn't spot him at night. We both had very good teachers. We did. I had Pajarito, and you? Oh, I had a teacher like Pajarito, a Mr. Riggs. Did he teach you about heroes? Oh, sure, that was his favorite subject. Well, he is always telling us about knights hunting dragons and uh, these kings using their crossbows and these mountain men way up in uh, Hudson Valley. Well, they were always grabbing these wildcats by the neck and throwing them all around the forest. But he never had any blankets like uh, Pajarito. It's warm. Warm, huh? I think it's time. There it is. Watch out now. Don't touch it. I can smell it. It's hot. Here, take this. Okay? Beautiful frijoles. A little dirt got in here. That won't hurt it. Probably ate some peck berries. Afraid there's nothing we can do. Huh? All right, all right. Hey, Mushy. What? Uh, give me. A... Go get some water, huh? Get some what? Get some water. The bird is sick. Don't you worry. He's just probably tired and hungry and thirsty. Get some water in him, some grain. A little bit of luck, he'll be as good as new in the morning. Yeah, it's been a long, hard day for everybody. He's a pretty scrawny little thing to begin. Give him 
the water. We've got to get going now. Signor, are these few moments that precious to you? I'm afraid so. We've got a long, hard ways to go yet today. Tenemos y queremos. Hey. Pepe, we got to go now. Señor Favor, el número uno, he never made a sound. Yeah, well. Well, that means he, he never suffered, didn't he? One. I understand you bring your cattle this way. Yeah, that's right. You, of course, have the sign right away. No, I didn't know anything about one. That's a shame. Yeah. This is Senor Garcia. He is the owner of this land from here to Tres Rios. Senor Garcia is a farmer. Yeah, well, tell me, what has Senor Garcia got to do with me? He would like a simple toll charge. One peso for each of the animals that crosses his land. You can tell Senor Garcia that he isn't going to get a peso from me ever. And if I have to, I'll take the herd around his land. You know where the Trace Rios is, Senor? No, and I don't care too much. You cannot go around his land without turning back and going around the entire mountains. Senor Garcia is a big farmer. Yeah. Well, let me put it to you this way. We got about 2,000 head of cattle back there, and I sure as heck don't have 2,000 pesos. And even if I shook down all 20 of the men on the crew, we couldn't come up with $50. Then perhaps a compromise can be reached. Like what? Beef, senor. I've already gone over this whole thing with some general, what's his name, back there. Velasquez. Yeah, something like that. Where? I don't know, around, around 10 miles back in the riverbed. Muchachos, buscan a Velasquez. Para el sur. Well, senor. How much cattle? Enough to feed my people. Well, I can let you have three yearlings. That's all my boss ever let me get away with. It. Six yearlings, senor. These are very hungry people. All right, six. Ready. Don't say it. Don't say a word. Was, uh, just a second. Yeah. That'll be kind of new for you, won't it? Thank you. 
Ya nos pusimos de acuerdo. Te aseguro que están muy satisfechos, ¿eh? Está sí. bueno. Again, I thank you. I'm grateful, for if we had been discovered, I would have kept my word. That's right. I would have seen to that. Ahorita si viene. Ya era tiempo.
Thank you. Thank you, Signor Fable, for everything that you've done for the children and for me. Leonardo, who are they, anyway? They're my compatriots. I would be pleased for you to meet them. Maggie, hold on to things here. Sure, Mr. Faber. Senor Favor, mi amigo. Senor Valino, mi compadre. We've already met. Con mucho gusto. Did you ever get to see el hombre bravo? He knows. For last Christmas, we are here. We are short of ammunition. We're outnumber five to one. We gotta get to the border immediately. I'm taking the children that way. I cannot risk the children's safety. There are almost 60 federales and well armed. We can only last a few minutes here, a half hour at most. Comprendo. Pajarito, ¿estás seguro de los niños? Sí. ¡Gracias! It seems that I have come a long way for this. I don't know what I can say. Sorry. I'm sorry, too. Ay, que modo de morir! Solo un idiota! It's not so much dying I mind, but then when we were fired our last bullet, I don't see how I could prevent you from being captured alive. There is a way out. To the border? No. Well, make up your mind. I have. But I cannot do it myself. Maybe you do it for me. Matarte? Si. Mi amigo? El profesor de... de mis hijos? No puedo. No puedo. Señor Favor, will you? Well, I would. Shoot me. Please try to understand. In a few minutes, at best, I will be killed. At worst, I will not be dead. I will be taken prisoner by Valet's case. Then the people will see that El Hombre Bravo is nothing but a poor, weak teacher, saying that everything he ever wrote was a lie. The only way to keep El Hombre Bravo alive is for Pajarito to die. Uh, I understand, but I'm just not the person to do it. Look, it, it isn't my war. Maybe I could help you some other way. Senor Favor, you go with the children to the border. Mushy could do that. Senor, you must keep your promise. I will keep mine. I'll take the kids. Valino. I tell the men we stay and fight. Go. What are you figuring on doing? I will make my enemies do what my friends would not. Aquí se matan. Cada bala cuenta. ¿Están listos? Sí, amigo.
Morin. Abby, you know what I just saw? I saw El Hombre Bravo. You did? A tallity. Oh, about the tallest man I ever did see. Big mustache and silver gun? Shiny silver. Pajarito. Where's Pajarito? Look, Pepe. Pajarito is dead. But, but he died saving El Hombre Bravo. He died a hero. Si. Look, Pepe, can you keep a secret? Si. Don't bother to tell the other children that Pajarito is dead. They wouldn't understand. You just tell them that he's a big hero, and uh, you tell them, too, that I saw El Hombre Bravo. Si. Everything all right, Mr. Faber? It's all yeah. shooting. Everything's all right. Let's get going. Thank you. 
Uh, <clears throat> oh, man, when I get back on my feet, I'm gonna settle up with you. That meat was good. It was rotten. It was not. Mm. You and that partner of yours brought in a dirty camp disease. Uh, shut up. You're out of the weather, ain't you? Save your strength. Oh, must have been some kind of poison. I still think it was blood color. Next stop's gonna be Gold Ridge. I'm afraid somebody's gonna have to go on. <sighs> All right, you lover. No, I mean, I'm somebody else. Oh, I... I thought you were... I'll tell you what, uh, how about let's start now and I'll leave it? Sure. I'm sorry. That's all right. Why? What are you doing here anyways? Well, I was on my way to Fort McLeod and my horse spooked at a dust whirl and broke his leg and I had to... Too bad. Uh, what's your name? Lottie Denton. If you got a spare horse, I'll be on my way. I'm sorry, I haven't got one to spare. How come you were so fast with a gun, anyway? Well, I, I heard this town was a hangout for hard cases. Who are you, anyway? They sick or something? Well, the drovers. We got a herd about 30 miles south of here in Box Canyon. And that's where they picked up the sickness. What about you? You ain't sick. Oh, I was uh, away at the time. Uh, I'm the trail boss of the outfit. My name's Favor, Gil Favor. It's whatever it is. Uh, we don't know whether it picked it up from the food or the water or what, but we've buried one man already. We don't want to lose any more. Say, maybe you could help me tending him, huh? Oh, well, uh... Oh, look, just, just through the night. Then uh, in the morning, maybe I could let you have that horse you need. I'm sorry. I'd like to help out here, but I don't know. One woman alone with six cowboys. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Look, there are half... Sick to death, you know. I, I just worried about getting well. Honest. Quince, you look about the most alive. You think you can make it gold rich? Well, I guess if a horse can make it, I, I can. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't really know if whatever it is is catching. Uh, it could be cholera, typhoid, almost anything. But uh, it isn't fair to ask you to stay like this. Maybe you'd better go with Quince to Goldridge, huh? Oh, no, no, not Goldridge. I've, I've got no business in Goldridge. I mean, I, I've had every kind of mine and camp misery there is. And, well, I just gave up a long time ago being afraid of catching anything. You need me to help you out here. Well, that's, that's fine. Just fine. Thank you. Wince. Be careful. It's a rough country. Yeah. Uh, you just hang tight and rattle. I'll, I'll get that, Doctor. If what they got's catching, there's no sense in having a catch. You give me a hand, we can separate them and make them more comfortable. Right. I can rest here. Well, you come on, mister. You let me help you, and then you can rest all you want. Thank you. There you are, sir. Sir? Everybody calls me mushy. Well, I'd rather call you mister. You, you must be, be an angel. <laughs> I'm afraid not. I'm all human. Come on, Brown.
see you picked the best room in the house for yourself again. Ah, you're a real funny fella. Oh, oh, oh wait, the lady. Uh, that's too heavy for you. You playing games with me? Where I come from, a woman don't work like that for a man, less than she's wife to him. Well, we got a little ways to go yet. Yeah. If I'd ever found a woman that could pull alongside me steady, I'd had us a pretty little homestead in Montana by now. Working together, just like a good team of horses. Yes, sir. Good horses. A little Palomino and a big iron shod breed. Oh, oh no, ma'am. I mean uh, fair and square. Uh, even a, a give and take. Well, you keep looking for her, friend, and maybe you'll find her sooner than you think. <laughs> Sign. Not yet, Monty. We've been way over on the other ridge. Do you see her? No. Nope. She's not on the Op Mocho Trail. Oh, it takes nerve. She must be down that mountain someplace. You figure she's reached help? Well, there ain't nothing down there except Gray Rock. Ain't nobody there except them in Boot Hill. Don't tempt the devil. That woman would stir up a dead man just for the sake of killing him again. Come on. Remind me of somebody I knew once, you know? I knew a lot of you. That's right. You rowdy. Yeah, by name only, not nature. You feeling any better? I feel like I swallowed a whole skunk farm. <laughs> you can't love That's what I like. A man who can joke no matter how he's feeling. Not like your boss. Oh, how, how do you mean? Well, he seems kind of heartless, doesn't he? Oh, he's got a lot on his mind. I heard now everybody's sick and all. And all. Top man. You all right? Yeah. Just wishing I was a bit younger. We don't get younger. We just get smarter. You getting tired of carrying Mr. Favor's load for him? Well, I do get tired of nursemaiding his bunch of ingrates day after day. Just because I look like a splinter in the wind. Don't mean I'd ever let a friend down. Of course you wouldn't. You are an exceptional, generous, understanding gentleman. Just like every other man who wears pants and spurs. Oh, don't you worry, Mr. Favor. He's weak, but he's all right. He bearing a grudge against you. I know of, anyways. Why? Oh, never mind. A man can say anything, especially when he's delirious. Hmm. Uh, I guess we'll just have to hope that by resting a while, I can pull through. Oh, sure. Plenty of peace and quiet. That's the best medicine there is. And you? Mm. It's strange you're being here like this, though. Lucky, I mean. I'd have had a hard time handling them all by myself. Well, any woman married to a mining engineer gets to learn first aid and nursing mighty quickly. Is your husband uh, still working in Gold Ridge? No more. I ain't got anybody to lean on, and uh, I'm not asking for any help. You understand that? It's only fair to tell you, Mr. Favor, that, well, I'm on the run, and if I stay here, 
I'm likely to get caught. You care to tell me what you're running from? No, that's that's all I'm going to say. No use in everybody's getting involved in my troubles. Hey, you're involved in ours. Slow down there, Mr. Favor. It's a long night. Like I said, worry about me. I'll, uh, I'll get some saddle blankets. Something you needed? Yeah, I was feeling a little chill, but it ain't anymore. I'm Marty Brown. Well, hi there, Marty Brown. I'll see if I can find something to cover you up with. Funny you being here alone. I didn't hardly have any choice. My horse went lame. Bad country to travel single. Especially for a she like you. Come over here where I can talk to you. Something ain't right. Something just don't seem. I don't belong to this group of fork-legged cow nannies. I made every big town in the country. My head's been going around and around about some blondie woman I heard about in the mines. Some blondie woman drove everybody crazy. Well, there's, there's always plenty of blondes around to gossip about. <laughs> I'm not talking about the color of her hair. They said she's like a herd of palominos in a ripe wheat field. Like you. Said she's an old woman. And then some. Yes. You look even better when you're acting mad. Mr. Faber isn't like you, Paul. And me. Sure, he's got his own kind of plans. You need somebody that's got that's got your class. No thanks. Me and you, Lottie, will make you the queen of San Francisco. Why? Why me? You just can't resist a real man, can you? <laughs> man. <laughs> Look at you. You broaden the shoulders and narrow in the head, and you're so weak you can't even stand up. Your children. Every one of you, and it makes me sick. You all think you're so blue perfect. And it don't count that I just give and give and give, and you take. Marty Brown, don't say I didn't give you fair warning. All right, Palomino. Come over here. Let's get friendly like. It's Lottie. 
Marty Brown, you're just going to get hurt. I say, come here. You want to play with Lottie? Come on, Scotty. Come on over here. Let's dance around the room a little bit. Come on, big man. Come on. You want to dance with me? Come on, come on, honey. Come on. Come on over here. That's enough. You keep out of it. Be careful, please. Don't worry, Miss Light. I'll take care of it. You get hurt, boy. <laughs> You're alone now? Ah, go on, go on. That's enough, mister. I think he's learned his lesson now. <laughs> Don't bother you anymore. Thanks. Help me, Palomino. I'm burning up. I gotta have water. Let me have some. Stranger, what's the trouble? Uh, I lost my horse. I gotta go out. Slow down a minute. Go where? Cold Ridge, doctor. I left some real sick men back there. You look kind of broke down yourself. I, I just need a horse. You take him in. Get the croaker. We'll go on. No one back down there helping the sick ones? A boss. A woman. Real fair kind of woman? She was already at the hotel. We got there. Then you know where we'll be. Shouldn't be messing with me. Listen, mister. You're just as good as anybody else. It's just that Mr. Favor shames you so. He he tries to he tries to be fair. Fair to everybody. No, 
Maybe, maybe his idea of fair is different from mine. Did he say something wrong to you? Well, just never mind. It'll all come out in the wash. Sometimes, sometimes he's, uh, he's kind of high and mighty. Sometimes. Sure you don't have a fever, too? No. Don't even think it. All this is more than enough as it is. Got a lot of things to look after. Cows, horses, men. And now got a woman in the menagerie, huh? I'll have to be moving on in the morning. Maybe you don't have to. Maybe if you told me all about it. This is the only way out. If I stay here, then... They? Always they. If I knew who they was, uh, I might be able to help. You got trouble already. Might not be any trouble. Might even be a pleasure, considering all you've done for us. Can you teach me how to use this? It isn't how to use it, girl. It's when you use it that counts. The time is closer than you think. I you can't be a loner all the time. You gotta break down and trust somebody sometime. Trust, Mr. Favor? Trust is a word for little girls. I was worried about you. Well, all we want is everybody well and back on their feet. You know, when I was a kid, I had scarlet fever. And it felt a lot like this. My ma, she used to, she'd make, she used to make some, some hot drink and a willow. Leaves and honey. I bet everybody respected your mother. Reminded me a lot of you, Claudia. I never knew my mother. But your boss reminds me of my father. Hard and cold and always has to be right. Yeah. Well, he is a lot of the time. Well, maybe so. I don't know him as well as you do. But I do know. That men are put up with a lot when they're worked half to death most of the time and don't have time to think. You've got something there. <laughs> you better let me help you. Just lay right back down there. But I ought to be helping. Well, you can help most by figuring out what you got. I just know it wasn't my cooking, did it? Well, of course not. You're all fine till Mr. Faber hired on that brown and his friend. Yeah, they probably brought it with them. Before we ever got onto it, one of them up and died. I never did know his name. Now, you'd think that a trail boss would think twice before he hired on people like that. Oh, well, when you're shorthanded, you gotta take what you can get. I suppose so. Just don't mind me, Wishbone. I'm just another gabby female. Oh, 
lady. I've been listening to Prairie Wind so long, I even forgot how nice a lady's voice can sound. I never did like that, Wind. Always sounds like somebody's heart breaking for loneliness. You hear it more when you hit my age. Begin to count the wasted days dribbling through springtime, summer, fall, and winter. Till they're all winter. And every day is dry and cold and gray. Man shouldn't waste them all. I thought you were supposed to be kept warm. I'm all right. Nice and cool. I thought Luddy was watching over you. <laughs> I guess you're cooled off enough now. Uh, she said that I could uh, be getting up. Uh, well, I'm quick. telling you, you're lying down and you're keeping warm. Just a second, mister. I ain't your dog. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Seems like we're all getting awful touchy. Lots to do, and tomorrow's another day. You go from here, Lottie. Oh, I don't know, anywhere. Away from here. Could be a long, hard ways. I thought you were supposed to be married. Widowed. I'm sorry. I'm not. It's just been one dirty mining camp after another. I thought a woman was supposed to want her own home, security, and things like that. I thought so, too. Not anymore. It hurts too much. From now on, I play it my way. And if you found somebody who didn't hurt? Be the first time. You sound pretty bitter, girl. You know, it ain't that difficult to see you standing around in a starched apron. I'd bet just about anything that. What you seem to be and what you really are are two entirely different things. Gail Favor, you may be a cattle-driving genius, but you just don't know nothing about women. I'd still like to know why you left Gold Ridge, though. Well, I... I guess you've got a right to know. My husband, Hale, he was a mining engineer, and it was kind of like being in the army. He was always busy, always away from somewhere, and always, always doing something I couldn't share in. And, well, I'm, I'm not much of a one for buzzing around sewing bees. No, I guess you wouldn't be. Well, one afternoon, my husband came home, and he found his partner there. There wasn't nothing scandalous about it. Monty never even looked at me that way, ever. But Hale had a terrible temper. And there was a fight, and somebody dropped a gun, and I picked it up. And it went off. And my husband fell. And um, disappeared. Well, I was, I was just about out of my mind. And then I heard all these men running, this pack of men running, and I got panicked. And so I just jumped on the horse and I rode out of there, out of that town this way. Well, the law's after you. There isn't any law. 
and gold rich. You see, my husband's friends, and they're not after justice, Mr. Favor. They're, they're after blood. I can't blame you for running from that. Nobody would ever, ever believe my side of the story. some coffee. It's all we got. Here. Look, Marty Brown, you start getting funny with me, Gil Faber's gonna be bringing your coffee. Now uh, you and me go to the bright lights dance, since I get the feeling better. Look, I already saw the bright lights dance, and I didn't like it. That lady up in the mining camp. Seems I remember she was married. So what's wrong with marriage? Some other things, too. Some other things I heard, and she wasn't so settled down. Don't worry, Palomino. I ain't perfect either. I got plans for us. <laughs> Funny. Everybody's got different plans, you and me. Ah, uh, coffee tastes salty. Have some water. No. <laughs> Help me, Palomino. The fever's coming back again. Have some more water. No. You've been sweating too much. Got yourself all disturbed. Help me, somebody. I'm freezing. I'm freezing. good it can do when it's loaded. Huh. You're gonna need much of a do-gooder, Lottie. I'll bet you're the best gunfighter in the bunch. Maybe, but I ain't got the ambition to find out. Wouldn't you use one to protect somebody you care for? Sure. Sure, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing yet. Uh, 
Take it easy now. No boot hill. Don't want none of that boot hill. Um... <clears throat> That's better, huh? I thought uh, Lottie was supposed to be taking care of you. She was taking care of me, all right. She's going to take care of me. Better watch her, mister. There she's... Uh... Uh... You see, devil. Just trying to help. I've been around. Your game is about up. Why, what's the matter, lover? I thought it was you and me. Big man Brown and little Lottie going to see the lights dance. Going to be queen of San Francisco. Going to be, I just don't know what all. You're quicksand. You're a painted spider. I'm going to squash you. It's the last thing I do. Well, Marty Brown, didn't anybody ever tell you you shouldn't ever threaten a lady? No. No, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, I don't want... No, get out of here. Get out of here. I don't want your head. Get out. Get out. No, get out. No, get out. No. Get out. No. Get out. Thing we got plenty of blankets. Mm hmm. Is Matagill something bothering you? Uh, yeah, I gotta admit something is. Well, what is it? Well, it's just the men. Sure got them falling all over themselves for you. Got them all buffalo do a fairly well, except maybe Brown. What are you trying to say? It, it's not that I don't appreciate all the all the help you've done. I, I do. It's just that. Well, I mean, now look, I, I'm not saying that you're trying to take them over, but... It isn't that, Gil. It's just that they sense that I need them. Well, I, I wouldn't stand a chance against a mob. Yeah, I, I, know, I know that, and I, I want to help all I can. But them being as sick as they are, well, I, I just want you to understand that... Well, I can't have them getting in a battle that they got no part of. Life blaze! Now, you simmer down. Miss Lottie, I got a gun, and it's ready. Look, there may be 20, 30 men coming, and you you won't be able to handle that kind of a ruckus. Quit trying to hog all the glory. You see what I mean? I can still line up a sight just as good as you, maybe a little bit better. I'm with you, Wish. I'll help out. Brown and Mushy would help, too, if they was able. Look, will you just simmer down? Don't get yourself into a sweat. You're supposed to be lying down anyways. Now, you look here. This young lady could have got away, but she didn't. She stayed and tended to us. Now, you don't think we're going to turn her over to the first bunch of coyotes that come through? Did I say turn her over to the coyotes? Well, look, all I'm saying is that we ought to use a little bit of reasoning and talk to these people first instead of just jumping right into a battle. We only did talking. We got plenty of guns. No, no, hold it, boys. This is my problem. There's no argument about this, Lottie. We're sticking together right now. She's down there somewhere. That well, should be down the hotel, I think. Her and them drovers. Best thing we split. We'll go in one at a time, slow and easy. Try every building. And we'll make our way toward the hotel. Remember, don't take nothing for granted. Brown. 
Lottie? Where's Miss Lottie? Brown. Brown. Mr. Favor. Mr. Favor. What is it? Mr. Brown, you better look at him. You seemed all right a while ago. I come in to talk to him once. I thought he was out of his head, maybe. Did he say anything? He said uh, something like, he said he knew her. Like she said, they probably got more backing them up. I said, get back. I'm going to talk to them. They'll talk. They're not about to waste time talking. But they're not taking our Lottie, neither. Lottie, hold it! Likes dead men. What do you think? I won't leave without her. She killed my partner. And I didn't come down here to watch her laugh at us either. Pour it on. About what Brown said. Brown is sick. About Brown, what he said. I'm sick too. Yeah, you sure are, mushy. Rowdy, will you hold it? You're crazy with the sickness. At least give me a chance to settle it reasonable. Talk too much, fella. started this mess. You're going to clean it up. Now, what's going on out there? You can ask your questions later. The truth, now! She killed Brown. No. He told me she was going to do it. I didn't believe her. I thought it was a fever. You're sick. He's got bad well, she fever. She says you killed Brown. I'm willing to believe him unless you come up with a better explanation. Well, oh. now! Oh. All right, Mr. Favor. All right. Brown was just like all the rest. And the time is long gone since I have to knuck under to scum like that. When I was 15, there was a sweet-talking gambler came through town. And when I went his way, he put his boots to me. Did I put a knife to him? <laughs> no, you... You're going to hear the rest of this. And then there was a nice, sweet old farmer. And he, he took me in and I, I scrubbed his floors and I washed his pigs. And I listened to him while he raved about how good he was and how bad I was and tried to prove it to me. And I got away and I got to the big city and I, I tried to get an honest job. But you know how that came out. The men hailed that and found me and we went traveling. 
And it was one mining camp after another on that gold ridge. And nobody, nobody, nobody except maybe Monty ever thought of the little sweet Lottie did and there's anything in the world except a... I killed Hale, and I killed Brown, and I'm just sorry, Mr. Favor, I didn't get to you and them, because you're all the same! Money. I'm sorry, Lottie. Who she was. No, I guess maybe nobody did. So we made up a makeshift corral. That seems to work out all right. Good. There's only one thing left to get done. Go out, pick up Wishbone and Mushy and bring them back. Uh, Wishbone's here in town somewhere. He's dickering for a rebate on some supplies. Good. That leaves uh, only Mushy for you to pick up then. Me? Yeah, you. Well, couldn't I send some kid or something? <laughs> to pick up two wagons and uh, a remuda? Any time, Mr. Yates, any time. Ah, as long as I'm riding on out there, maybe I'd better take Mushy as pay, eh? Oh, I already paid off Wishbone and Mushy yesterday. Yeah.
Mr. Mr. Eddie. How you doing? You look so happy about you're uh, out of a job, you know. I mean, no, never mind. Mr. Favor says we're going back to Brazos to pick up another herd. And we're traveling by train. Yeah? What's so good about that? Well, Mr. Wishbone says train travel is broadening. Well, I guess that depends on your point of view. Now, where are the wagons? The what? Wagons, where are they? You're pushing me, Mr. Roddy. <laughs> Foolishing? Well, you know there ain't no wagons. What do you mean I know there ain't no wagons? Cut that out, Mr. Roddy. You're scaring me now. Mushy, where's the wagons? All the equipment. And the horses, where's the remuda? Mushy? Well, you didn't send any buyers out here to pick up the wagons? Buyers? Well, sure. Four men came out here this morning. And they said they bought everything from Mr. Favor. Everything? You mean wagons, horses, saddles, rifles, ammunition? Well, if they uh, bought everything, how come uh, they didn't take this stuff right here? Well, this was all mixed up on two wagons. And Mr. Wishbone and me unloaded it to see what we had. Don't tell me. Don't tell me, let me guess. They were in too much of a hurry to load this stuff up. No, they started to load it all right. And I told them Mr. Wishbone was in town trying to sell it. And he might get in trouble if he sold it twice. They were very nice about that. They were? Well, sure. They thought they'd bought everything. But they said if there was going to be any kind of mix-up, they just let it go. They wanted to do the right thing. Gee, that, uh, that's really awfully nice of them. Well, I thought so. Well, one of them had a bill of sale. D did you get a look at it? I didn't exactly see it. But one of them took it out of his pocket. Yeah, and? And? Well, Mr. Roddy, I, th I thought they were friends of yours and Mr. Favors. He acted so nice. You mean you didn't look at the bill of sale because you didn't want to embarrass them? <sighs> well, now which way they go? That away. Uh, that away, huh? All right. Well, you haven't got a chance in Hades to find them, probably, but we better make a try in it. Come on, come on, let's go. Don't talk to me, Faber. Look, look, I'm three hours late already on account of you. Now I'm leaving. Look, I know, I know, no, but my men aren't here yet. You call those men? Well, they ain't all like that, Smitty. No. Some of them are like... Well, they've had a hard three months on the trail. Now they're entitled to blow up a little steam. Huh? A little steam? Well, it'll take this town a month to recuperate. If I had my way, I wouldn't even let them on the trail. Uh, Smitty, you're absolutely right, but... Fifteen minutes? Fifteen... You couldn't get the rest of these saddle bums on this train in fifteen days, let alone fifteen minutes. I'm not even worried about the drovers anymore. I sent Rowdy after Mushy in the wagons yesterday afternoon, and I haven't even heard from him since. Do they know what time this train is supposed to leave? Rowdy does. Then he knows it's too late to catch it. I should have left three hours ago. Now, you get your men aboard right now, or I'll go without you. Oh, Smitty. You... Well, have you got any money left, Yo-Yo? No, I didn't think so. Well, I'll tell you what. 
you go get on the train, and we'll take you back to Texas. And if you're very good and work very, very hard for another three months, we'll give you another big night on the town. All right? <laughs> All right. Speak English? Nice. Well, she too. Very nice. Oh, nice. Thanks a lot for finding him for us, but he's got to go now. Understand? Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. He's the nicest. Ah, well, well, never mind. I'll take you. Ah. Yeah, why should you know? Nice. Very nice. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Mr. Fraver! I look in every house in town, can't find them anywhere. Can't wait any longer, the train's leaving. Well, you can't go without them. I can't do anything about it. But they'll be here, I know they will. Wishbone, the train is leaving now. It won't wait any longer, so let's go. I won't go without Mushy. Suit yourself. <laughs> Catch it before it goes out of the valley. Come on, ride! I'm right! You sit down here, try to find the boss. the ridge. Leaving two horses and two saddles behind? Well, I'm uh, afraid we might have lost a little more than a couple of saddles. Oh? Now, uh, before, uh, before you say anything, I want to explain one thing to you. See, this whole thing was my fault. I mean, I could have figured something like this could have happened. And, well, I didn't, and it did. It could have been worse. Worse than what? 
kind of hard to explain. Well, why don't you just try starting your ugly little story right from the beginning, then? <clears throat> well, you see, Wishbone and Mushy, they were guarding uh, the wagon and the supplies and the horses. Uh, and uh, Wishbone had to go into town. And Mushy was left alone uh, guarding the supplies, the horses, and wagons. And these four men rode up, see? And... for a bill of sale? Yeah, well, boss, you gotta consider the circumstances. Circumstances? You I'll give you a circumstance. I'm not only responsible for that equipment, I have sold it. You what? You heard me. I have sold it for $1,200 United States currency right here in my money belt. Horses, wagons, supplies. And you know, when that stuff don't turn up, just exactly what my name's gonna be all over the Southwest Territory? Now, look, boss. No, it ain't gonna be boss. It's gonna be you fire machine right now. Fire him? Keep him out of my sight, because he will regret what I do. No, look, I know. It's I don't want to hear nothing more about it. I know how you feel about mushy. But I have got a responsibility to the owners. And they have got a right to the feeling that I am protecting their property to the best of my interest. And I certainly can't do it with that irresponsible thief fouling things up. Now, look, you listen to me a second. Now, you listen real good, Faber. Don't go telling me I'm fired because I wouldn't work for you for all the money in that fat money belt of yours. Now, sure, Mushy might have done something stupid, but uh, he's got no corner on the stupidity market. You've got to remember, you pulled a few good gems yourself, you know. Yeah, that's right. And in fact, the dumbest thing you ever did was to hire me because I'm the one who put Mushy and Wishbone out there. And if you're so worried about your boss's money, here it is. There's my wages. And you count it, Favor, and you count it real good. And while you're doing it, you count all the cattle that you've lost over the years through stupid mistakes and your dumb judgment. You fire Mushy, because I ain't got the gut for it. a brake cord when a train's in motion? It was him. He done it. He pulled the cord. Uh, shut up, Smitty. Shut up. My fireman singed every hair off his head. Shut up! Would you mind telling us what it's all about? I think you'd be terribly interested. I'm trying it, anyways. You told Mushy he was fired. Oh, no, as a matter of fact, I didn't. He must have overheard us talking then. Why? Well, because he ain't here, that's why. You sure? Well, I've searched every inch of this train and he isn't on it. Well, this train hasn't stopped since we left Silver Creek. That's right, he must have jumped. That fool. That word comes real easy to you, doesn't it, Favor? 
All right, all right. What are you intending on doing? Going after him. You gonna stop me? Why should I? This is your horse and your saddle. You already made it clear how you feel about company property. Well, that's all right. As long as you come back and work it off. Now, what's he sore about? Well, Quince, when you arrive, you give this to Mr. Grayson, huh? Sure. You going after Roddy? Well, somebody's got... You know, that boy is such a hothead, I'm really surprised he stopped to bother to take a horse. Vasily, look! Am I blind? I see. Thea, come back here. When will you learn? You might as well yell at the wind. I'll flay her alive. What am I? I am a performer. Am I also to be Samaritan to the public highway? Moses to the wilderness? Collector of human garbage? I have no room for him. See if he has any money. Come 
much. Enough. I changed my mind. Bring him. Bring him? Are you crazy? Shut up! First we rob him, then we take him with us so he can tell everybody we took his money? Are we not saving his life? Is a man's life not worth a few dollars? If he dies, we will be blamed. If he dies, we have done a Christian thing. We have brought him to town for a decent burial. And if he lives, he may be useful. Bring him. It's no use. He couldn't have gone this far. We ain't giving up. We're going into South Fork. Maybe he found the road. Maybe somebody even yeah, picked him up. Yeah, maybe this, maybe that. He's lying out there, dying of thirst, wishing he had a gun so he could end it all. <laughs> No, I can't do that. Well, I'm a ramrod. I mean, I tell other men what to do. Like on a cattle drive. Well, when I speak to them, they jump. They say, yes, sir, Mr. Musgrove. No, sir, Mr. Musgrove. And when my coffee cup gets empty, or somebody fills it up without even asking. Well, you don't believe me, huh? I wish I could take you on one of those old cattle drives and show you. Why, uh, sometimes I have to step in here and when the men are fighting and... And, uh... I ain't no ramrod. I ain't even a cowboy or a drunk. Just a... I'm just a cook. I mean, all I do is... Worst dishes. But someday, maybe I'll be a real cook like Mr. Wishbone. Well, Mr. Wishbone. Well, you don't know him, do you? He's a friend of mine. Used to be. I guess... guess I ain't got any friends anymore. Except you. Such a prize for a mere forty dollars. Might give you a forty-five. What do I say to my wife when the children cry for food? As I can go. Like I said, it's been a bad year. Listen to me. I am an honorable man, but I'm about to do a terrible thing. Only because I am forced to, I must take my family away from this dust and eat. 
One hundred dollars. A man of discernment such as you cannot afford to say no. You owe it to yourself in Christian charity. You cannot ask me to take less. Fifty. Last offer? Eighty. Fifty. Uh, five? Seventy. On the fidelity of my wife and the head of my son, I will not take one penny less. Sixty. Done. How long will he sleep? Oh, one hour, two at the most. <laughs> Goodbyes are so painful, we put a little something in his wine. You'll be able to work when he wakes up. Tell him what to do and stand out of the way. Somebody, a fellow about our size, a couple of pounds lighter, sandy hair, blue eyes. Should have been brought into town today, probably. Well, would have been some talk. Uh, ain't heard nothing. Uh, there's a this fellow wanted for something? No, no, he's just a friend, a little misunderstanding about his job. I ain't seen him. I ain't heard nothing. Uh, let you know if I do. Much obliged. We'll be at the hotel. Vasily goes to sell something, he sells it. You would rather haggle than save your own life. How much? Thirty dollars. The market is not what it used to be. Neither are you. A child could have sold him for fifty. Yeah. Even at sixty dollars, it was a mistake. She'll get over it. How many things does she have? He was important to her. I will buy her a pony. You're a fool. Nah. She found something she wanted and you sold it. And now with that money, you're going to buy her something she doesn't want. Name of a Mongolian pig. Am I to drag him over half the world? and stuff that sheep's face with food that should be going into our mouths. You'll wake her. She's too young. Oh. So that was it. <laughs> <laughs> you women make oh. me sick. Go get me something to eat. Well? Are you going, or am I to stand here and look forward to my old age?
say, it's uh, kind of important to us that we get this man. We'd uh, make it more than worthwhile to anybody who could give us a lead. Yeah. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. with them dishes. I don't understand. What? Well, how'd I get here? Well, from what I hear, the boss bought you. Bought me? Well, who from? Well, he didn't tell me, but if you don't get busy with them dishes, he's liable to tell you something you won't forget. How, how, long, how long do I have to stay here? My boy, you found yourself a home. Do I get paid? Why, sure. You get three square meals a day, place to sleep. That isn't fair. I mean, that's slavery, ain't it? It all depends on your point of view. From the boss's angle, it's charity. Charity? You got any money? No. You got a place to sleep? No. You got any friends? No, I... Not anymore, I guess. By then, it seems to me you ought to be mighty grateful. I can go when I want to. You don't see any change, do you? But this is a close community. Nobody will hire you when they know the boss is taking care of you. You get the picture? Guess so. Well, if I were you, I'd get through with them dishes in a hurry. What are you doing here? I'm riding up the line looking for Mushy. You were on the train. How'd you get here? Uh, well, uh, you see, Wish, it's kind of hard to explain. And you were with Mushy. Where is he? Oh, well, uh, you see, uh, well, we caught the uh, train before it left the valley, and then, uh, well, uh, and then... You might as well have the straight of it, Wish. Uh... Mushy jumped the train between here and Carson. Mushy jumped the train? Well, yep. Why? Wish, why don't you come over to the bar and have a drink, huh? Here, yeah, have a little drink. I'm hungry. She just ate. Am I responsible for the condition of my stomach? I am hungry. What's the matter? Hmm? <laughs> I 
<laughs> what are you laughing at? I thought you wanted to get rid of him. Get rid of him? <laughs> Never. He's like old mine. We will sell him in the next town and she will bring him back again. <laughs> <laughs> Determination you give up over quick. Yeah, well, what can we do that we haven't done already? Well, try again. I've been in every house, every store, every saloon. He's just not here. We'll go back and pick up his trail where we lost him. Hey, uh, that fellow you was looking for, I seen him. Yeah, where? Well, take it easy, Mr. Take it easy. Where'd you see him, fella? Well, he came in here last night after you left. He went off before I could find you. What? A girl came for him. I followed him. They got into some kind of wagon and drove out of town. What kind of wagons? Some kind of a medicine show. Uh, they come in here almost every year. The great Vasily, the guy calls himself. Which way'd they go? North. Let's go. Uh, you... Uh, you said something about a reward? No. Yeah. Uh, I knew he was all right. I'm glad you're feeling that way. Because that was your money what I gave that weasel. My money. <laughs> How come we run away? Hey, what are we doing out here? What are you doing? It's a man. Me? Uh, it's a wagon. Oh, that's a horse. Oh, well, those are my horses and wagons. Over there. Somebody's bringing them here. Who's bringing him here? The four men have stolen. Your people? Sure wagons go by this way? Yeah, early this morning. They stole me blind. Two sacks of flour, brand new wagon wheel, my wife's bronze tea kettle. You know which way they were heading? Yeah, they got a kind of a permanent camp about 15 miles east of here. Any of your guys stole our teeth? Better keep them in your pocket. Good. Look at, look at this. It ain't your gun. Oh. 
Don't pull like that. Hey, where did he come from? We picked him up in the desert. Why? It's impossible. What do you mean? He is the one we got this from. He? That's right. And when Mr. Favor finds out you got his gun, you're going to be in trouble. No. It is you who are in trouble. about? Well, then it boils down to a rather simple choice, as I see it. You can either try to kill us all off, which, of course, would be the hard way to settle things. You can just return our merchandise and, um, well, we'll forget it was ever stolen. Stolen? Ah! Oh. How can you ever say such a thing? My people are the very soul of honesty. Stolen, no, my friend. You see, my men found the wagons in the desert, along with the horses. And they simply brought them here so that they could be returned to the rightful owner. Oh, I didn't realize. I must say that was awfully thoughtful of them. Well, in that case, we'll take our gear and be moving along. There is, of course, the matter of the reward. Reward? Shall we say five hundred dollars? Or shall we say uh, fifty dollars? Stab me. Go ahead. Stab me. Stab me. Rather than ask me to accept fifty dollars for such a service as I have performed for you. If I were not the very soul of generosity, I'd demand a thousand dollars. Why, the horse's food alone came to $50. Vasily, my friend, I think we can at least start with the understanding that we're both honorable men. Well, let us also add that it is possible for honorable men to reach an understanding. Why do I want to go? I don't want to leave you. I mean, you gotta, you gotta believe that. I mean, Tia, you're, you're the only girl I ever had. I mean, you're the only girl I ever liked before. It's not, it's not that I don't want to stay with you. I mean, I want to stay with you more than I want anything. Just that I can't take care of you now. I mean, I'm not, not too smart. I mean, it's true. Uh, you think somebody like Mr. Favor or Mr. Rowdy would let, let them fellows take those wagons like that? I mean, I'm learning. And I mean, Mr. Favor and Mr. Wishbone are helping me all the time. Well, maybe in a year, a year after. Well, if you're gonna be my girl, uh, well, I gotta look after you. And I can't look after you now. I mean, not the way I want it to be. Not the way it ought to be. 
You understand? Then, of course, there's the Silver Spurs, which are not on the inventory, but which I know were in the wagons. I'll give you a break on them, say, uh, $145. Silver Spurs? There were no Silver Spurs. On the heads of my children, there were no Spurs. Oh, you were the one who got that. <laughs> well, let's see. There's the silver tooth saddle, which really should be reported to the sheriff. I value that at at least $1,000. I admit it's used, so I'll give you a break on it. 50% off. Now, that adds up without including a few bags of flour, two wagon wheels, oh, and a, and a, and a bronze tea kettle the fellow I know is looking for. Take it. Take it all. But let me hear no more about spars and saddles. The man is a thief. Marcia, uh, I know you got a tough choice to make. Uh, well, what are, you, what are you just standing there for? You got work to do. You heard the man. Let's get going, huh? Lieutenant Albright wasn't a bad sort. Uh, an officer. Yeah. How old was he? I don't know. 30? What a place. I'm hot and I'm thirsty and I'm hungry. And the things were bad enough before. Things are worse. What do you mean? Go ask Echoes. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Mama. 
Mumford said you wanted to tell us something. Yeah, I got a little thing here I'm supposed to read to you fellas. From commanding officer, Fort McGinnis, Colorado Territory, to Lieutenant A.T. Albright, October 3rd, 1877. Subject. You are hereby ordered to take custody of Chief Alicott and all the other Ute Indians that are imprisoned in the stockade, and you are directed to escort them to the Indian Reservation at Law Pie, Utah Territory. Well, go on. You shall have under your command one rifle company squad, which shall include one non-commissioned officer. You shall be responsible for the safety and well-being of Chief Olicott and the other Indians during this trip. And you shall take whatever action necessary to ensure delivery of Chief Olicott and the Indians to the reservation. And signed by the CO. Why'd you read us that? Corporal Dasovic requested that I read this to the whole squad. Something he found in Albright's belongings. Corporal Dasovic requested? Since when's he given orders? Well, since Albright's dead, uh, Mr. Dasovic over there is in charge. <laughs> well, who says he's in charge? Uh, Corporal Dasovic. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Well, I think the first thing we better do is get this fella buried. Why did he have to die now, Eccles? Well, I... I had never seen a fella with a burst appendix that didn't. You talked to him before he died, didn't you? What did he say? Nothing important, nothing at all. I'd like to say something over his grave. Oh, sure, you do whatever you want. Hey, don't worry about anything. Thanks. I'll take care of everything for you. Everett Willoughby, get that body out of there. Body is wrapped in a shroud, then placed in a grave that shall be no less than six feet by. Take your hand putting that grave together, will you? Lieutenant Albright was a good officer and a good commander. And he always set a good example for me and the men. And load. Also, he... I thought he was finished. Now go on. And I'll never forget his kindness to me. And his faith in me. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Amen. Full. And fire. Load. I think maybe we ought to put a couple of them out of their misery. Pull. Wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> Fire! Cover that up as soon as you can, will you, so we can get out of here? Hmm? Eccles, you think I should go talk to Chief Olicott? Oh, what for? Well, you know, because... Uh, 
Lieutenant Albright died, and now, now that well, I'm in charge, no I'd like difference. to go and I... tell him that. Oh, yeah, I guess you. Sure, come on, I'll go with you. Thanks. Because of the death of Lieutenant Albright, I am now in charge of the Army escort. We're six days away from the reservation at Law Pie. That's 120 miles. If you're supposed to be there, we better get moving. Have your people ready to go in an hour. A thief stole one chief on the cops' robe. Chief Olocott wants the robe returned and the thief punished. One hour. Please. Chief Olocott says Utes will not move in one hour or one day unless the army supply the Utes with fresh meat. Oh, come on now. You know as well as I do there ain't no game around here this time of year. Lieutenant Albright promised Chief fresh meat. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, then we'll see what we can do about it, right, Dasvig? Sure, sure. I'll keep the lieutenant's promise. You gave your word. Yes, I did. What'd you say? Yes, I did. And why'd you do that? Where'd you get them stripes, boy? Out of a picture book? You got a stripe from Lieutenant Albright. Albright. <laughs> Why don't you drop it? Dasovic here give us word we go hunting for game. Lab will be a little bit dangerous. Mumford and Baker spotted some fresh tracks yesterday, probably made by them renegade Indians who've been looting and murdering the whole country. We'll go hunting, just like you promised. Now, just a minute. Uh, Chief Olicott is missing a buffalo robe. He says, uh... Well, he, he says it was stolen. Do any of you men know anything about it? Well, if the uh, robe isn't brought to my tent before dark, I guess there uh, will be an inspection. yesterday we seen tracks we're really asking for it dragging all look it off to the reservation right through renegade territory i wonder what desivic would do if we locked horns with the renegades uh, probably look in the army manual <laughs> <laughs> you can bet chief holocaust just dying for those renegades to find us that way he won't have to go to the reservation i think we all ought to get back to the fort before we fry to death we better get back before it does if it gets us all killed, right, Echo? Uh, nobody wants to go to that reservation, not us and not the Indians. Yeah, but how about the corporal? Look! Take a look at that. There's your fresh meat. Found them two fat beauties walking all by themselves. Hey, you know, that wasn't a bad idea here, sending us hunting. Where's the rest of the squad? Oh, we split up. They'll be back in a minute. I heard some shots. 
Hey, yeah, so did I. Maybe they got a deer or something. Baker, get a fire going. I'll tell Willoughby to slaughter one of the cows. I already did that. You... But it's confusing if we both give orders to the men. Well, men aren't confused. I guess it's safe to go back. <laughs> <laughs> We saw these two cows, we rode toward them. This crazy guy started shooting at us. We had to shoot back or get killed. He, uh, he only got hit in the leg. He must have hit his head when he fell off his horse. Baker, Baker, get the antiseptic and the bandages and some wood for a splint. You and Willoughby carry him into Lieutenant Albright's tent. Well, he looks like a drover. Them fellas are sure full of an awful lot of funny stories. I wouldn't believe a the thing they said. I think two men should volunteer to serve the Indians their food. Well, then, uh, Willoughby, Nichols, will you do it? Average, you can take the big grin with you right now and go and feed those Indians. <laughs> go. <laughs> When you was in Montana mining copper, those boys and I were fighting together. I know those men and I know how to handle them. And I don't think it's fair you give me orders when I'm trying to help you, understand? Oh, look, I... I know you're a corporal and all that, but... You don't know, you don't know nothing about soldiering. And less about Indians. Why, General Custer didn't know nothing about Indians. Now, how would you like for them to start calling you Corporal Custer? You listen to me, and you're gonna be a lot better off. We all are. All right, Echoes. I was thinking it probably would be better to go back to the fort. The weather's changing. We're almost out of supplies, and there's an awful lot of renegades around here. Think about that, will you? Nobody's returned Chief Olicott's buffalo robe, so there will be an inspection in five minutes. Buffalo robe before Corporal Custer starts getting tough. I want to see Corporal Custer's face when that drover wakes up. <laughs> uh, 
I stole it. Lieutenant Albright wanted that there thing for a souvenir. You stole it? Wasn't that what I said? Why did you really take it, Eccles? You know, I think you're just gonna have to believe me, Dasovic. But then you'll have to be disciplined. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I will. Take it back to the chief, see if he believes you. I'm sorry about what happened. Who's in charge here? I'm Corporal Dasovic. I'm in charge. Corporal? Eh, hey, Corporal, you're in trouble. My name's Favor. I just had my cow stolen, and on top of that, I was shot at trying to get him back. But I was told that you started shooting and they had to defend themselves. Well, you was told by liars. I don't know you, mister. I'm going to have to believe the men. All right, all right. Just give me my cows back. I got a herd to catch up with. Uh, you only got three cows left. I had uh, one of the cows slaughtered before they brought you in. You are going to pay dear for that. Now, I want a receipt for that cow you killed. And I want my horses, and I want my guns, and I want them right now. We're uh, escorting Indians to the reservation at La Pai. They won't keep moving unless they have fresh meat. We've uh, got to keep your cows. Now look, those cows can't be replaced. You got no right to steal them. You'd, you'd hang anybody else for what you're doing. Army has a right to requisition your cows, your gun, your horse, anything it wants. Now, you just butt your fat nose right out of my business, huh, boy? I'm talking to the little corporal here. And I'm telling you, those cows ain't for sale. You understand that? And I want them back right now. You understand that? I'm sorry, I am. I, I've got the requisition forms in my tent. Uh, you'll be paid a fair price. They'll pay you back at the fort. No, they won't. You gotta wait till you get to the reservation. That's Indian meat. You gotta be paid by the agent. That's right, that's right, the uh, Indian agent at the reservation. I'm sorry. All right. All right, I'll go to the reservation, get paid for my cows. And then I'm gonna go to Fort McGinnis. And I'm gonna see to it that you and your buddies are all up for a court-martial, for thieving, for lying, for unprovoked assault. And I swear to you, I'm gonna see to it that you get five years of breaking rock in prison. Oh, I busted up. We gotta be out of here first thing in the morning. Hey. Since you don't give the orders around here, just what do you do? Same story, they'd probably believe us. Now, well, maybe Dazovic will agree to turn back. Uh-huh. Maybe there are 20 Chinese dancing girls waiting for us on the top of that mountain. <laughs> Men can't take any more of this heat. Indians either. Be a lot shorter to go back to the fort and try to make it to that reservation. Is that your recommendation, Nichols? Why, yes, Mr. Dasovic, that's my recommendation. Thanks, I'll think it over. Well, while you're thinking it over, it might be a good idea to give that drover fella back his cows. 
I'm responsible, Eccles. I'm in charge. You've got nothing to worry about. Hey, uh, Corporal. I'll uh, take that receipt for my cattle now, then. Well, uh, how much you say they're worth? $450 apiece. That's a joke, mister. And it's an expensive one. Look, those are rare cattle. Consequently, that means that uh, they are scarce. And that means that they are expensive. Oh, well, the Army Manual says the, the average Army price... The Army Manual? Yes, the Army Manual says the average price to pay for a head of cattle is $25. Top price is $30. The Army Manual? How can I get it through to you that these are not just a hunk of beef, these are milch cows? I'm here to tell you they are very valuable. Now, if you don't believe me, ask any of one of your men, they'll tell you. Well, I don't have to ask anybody. The manual says what you'll get, and that's what you'll get. Uh, hurry it up, Baker. Uh, as soon as we get done over there, we're gonna move out. I'm in charge. Look, I'm not the one that you gotta convince about that. Everson Willoughby, you ride back and cover the rear. Mumford, get on that ridge. Hold it. First, we'll find out what they want. I'll save you the time, I tell you. Horses, guns, or a piece of your head. I say we find out what they want. Chief Olakai. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to get us killed just because you're stubborn. Find out what they want. Looks like it be a trap. Twenty-five renegade Indians led by Kaima hiding hills. They are starving. They have had enough fighting. They want to surrender to the army with Chief Olakot. Trap. Now, anybody can see that's a trap. There's 25 of them, Corporal. We just better get out of here and get back to the fort. Well, what do you want to do? Get us torn up and looking different, because that's what's going to happen. As long as we got there, Chief, we're safe. We can go back to the fort. We're not even halfway to the reservation yet. What are you going to do? The governor of Utah promised safety to all Indians who, who surrendered to the army and agreed to enter the reservation. We all know that. Dasovic, those Indians are riding army horses. Some of them have army guns and army clothes, and the governor's word doesn't mean a thing. Well, Chief Olakot give his word that the renegades we will not harm the soldiers. Oh, he's crazy. Olakot gives his word. Well, listen to me, you are crazy. Dasovic, Dasovic. All right, then we'll, let them, we'll let them surrender to us, and we'll take them along to the reservation. Tell the renegades. This is your party, Echoes, and you can pay for it. Listen, mister, if you want those cows, you better change your mind. <laughs> Shh. 
sure. They want to surrender. They're just coming down here to beg you to take them to that reservation. Now, you can see that reservation now. None of us are. Hey. <laughs> what are you going to do? Do? Just throw down your gun, man. You might live a little bit more. Listen to me about going back to the fort. We wouldn't be sitting here now. And Corporal Custer here had to get awful heavy with his two stripes. What are they going to do with us? Well, maybe if you get lucky, they'll just drive you off a cliff like they do Buffalo. That's a Vic. That's a Vic. You think they're going to leave you out of it? surrender their land and their freedom to the army. The only dignity left to the Utes is to obey authority of army. Corporal is authority of army. Chief Olicott will not permit the authority of army to be disgraced, even by soldiers. Report you for turning against me. I guess I understand why you did it. I'm pretty green. I was afraid to ask for help. I know how to ask for help now. Olicott kept his word. The renegades won't bother us. First thing in the morning, we'll move out for the reservation. Nobody's going to that reservation. Not you, not me, not Olicott. We're going to the reservation just like we would if Lieutenant Albright was still alive. I'm in command. In command of what? Hmm? Now, you think just because that fella gave you a rifle and told you he was boss, that means something? It don't mean nothing. He don't mean nothing. The renegades got it, boy. You hear him yelling, Kaima? He's boss now. So you can forget your gun and your orders and your straps. You follow my orders or I'll use this rifle on you. And I'll be right. I'm in charge. I'd like to tell you something about your being in charge. I'd like to tell you something about your stripes, Corporal. Lieutenant Albright, well, he did say something before he died. Oh, uh -huh, that's right. You know what he said? He said, 
he thought he was crazy for ever making you a corporal. He said he thought you were nothing but a stupid young kid. And in his dying words, the last breath he ever took, he begged me to take over before you got us all killed. That's what he said. That's what your hero said. that thing away now. Because she ain't gonna do nothing with it anyway. Well, Corporal. to force Chief Olocott to join the renegades and be their leader. Chief Olocott refused. The renegades would see Chief Olocott dead before they let him destroy their faith and strength and freedom by entering the reservation. Tonight, Kaima and his renegades will drink much whiskey. Then they will select one brave. At sunrise, the brave will come and kill Chief Olocott. Olocott will not resist. But, but Olocott is their chief. Olocott must die so that Kaima can be chief of the Utes. You do not understand. A chief is not chosen. An Indian chooses to be chief. And if he survives those who oppose him, then he is chief. It is not a gift. No. No, no. The chief must not be killed. You do not understand. If a chief does not die in battle, there is no happy death. Baker, get up. Get up. Break out the extra rifles and ammunition. The renegades are going to attack at sunup. They're going to attack? Attack who? The renegades are going to kill Chief Olakar because he won't break the treaty and lead them instead of entering the reservation. we got a couple of hours until sunup. We can get Doug Eccles. You know the best way to do that. It's our job to protect the chief and get him to the reservation. Corporal, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but I'm afraid they ain't going to move no matter what you say, unless Eccles there okays at first. Yeah, that's right. You see, they ain't real soldiers. Not in the U.S. Army sense, anyway. Be closer to it to call it Eccles' own private little army. Leastwise, he's the boss around here. He ain't got the guts to even admit it, either today, but I'm afraid that's the truth of it. It ain't business for the army, for you, nor the Indians, not for nobody but the self. Now, since you can't join them, don't seem you can beat him. I'd say you'd better pull out, boy, before you get hurt real bad. Hey, we didn't go through 10 years of this here army to act like a bunch of sheep, did we? <laughs> All right. I'll give it up. You can be in charge of the squad. Only order the men to protect the chief. <laughs> well, it's a joke. Ain't nobody cares about them Indians. Not the army, not the government. Well, nobody. You're in charge, not me. Only tell the men to protect the chief. You're a fool, ain't you? You just don't understand, do you? Look, I'm not gonna ask those men to risk their necks. We're taking those Indians to the reservation for one reason. So a whole lot of greedy people can grab off some of their good land. Now, everybody knows that. If Albright were alive, he'd tell you the same thing. Liar! You're a liar. Admit it, you lied! And you lied when you said you stole a buffalo robe from Lieutenant Albright. And, you, and you, you lied about the way you said you found the cows. You lied! I don't care anymore. I'm not a corporal anymore. And I'm not afraid to stand up to you anymore. Admit you're a liar and a thief. 
Lieutenant Albright, he wouldn't steal from people he was supposed to be helping and protecting. I'm no leader. I'm no leader, but I'm in the army. You're a fool. You're really a stupid fool. I'm in the army, just like you, just like all of you. Our job is to protect. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Listen to me. I could have died a hundred times. Anybody here could have done that. For what? For an old Indian chief that's dead already? For a stupid young kid? For a treaty I don't even understand? I'm alive for only one reason. I got a choice. And as long as I got it, I'm gonna live. I'm gonna go on living. I'm in the army. It's my responsibility to protect the chief. I don't have a choice. Well, you got a lot of faith in him. Why don't you help him? Me? Yeah. Just interested in staying alive. You know I'm gonna do it if for no other reason than spite. Just to tell him at the fort what really happened here. since I've been the army. It's not a big episode. Do you believe you will be killed if you stay with me? I won't be killed. If you believe that, you are a fool. Maybe. I don't think so. But I can't let them kill you. You are a fool. You are not protecting a brave man. It was because your army defeated me in battle that they made me chief of the Utes. I have never won a victory from your army but they made me sign the treaty for the Ute nation. I have no honor. I must protect you. Believe that you will be killed. Stop saying that, please. Back where I come from, the Blackfeet Indians, they, they won't work in a compromise. They're, was their superstition. They're afraid to go underground. You know it. You believe it. You know that you will die. And still you come. And still you stay. I am afraid. I'm afraid I will be killed. One small part of my mind says I'll live, I'll survive. Somehow I'll survive. But I don't think it's true. It does not matter. You give me great honor great dignity by trying to protect me. To give dignity to a man is above all things.
Boże. O Boże, pomóż mi nie. Is dead. Eccles, he wants to talk to you. Now. Yes, 
Asimov, I lied to you. Asimov, can you hear me? All those things I told you, Lieutenant Albright said, well, he never said them. I lied to you. I'm sorry. What do we do now? We're going to go to that reservation. I don't know if we'll make it. I don't know. Disapproving, keep them doggies moving.